So I believe this is the moment where AMD will grow into one of the best companies or investment opportunities of the second half of 2024 and going onwards as well in 2025 and towards 2030. And I've positioned myself, uh, I've been active in AMD for like the past eight years. But I think as you can see that these are the, you know, ARM, SMIC, NVIDIA and ASML, Intel and a lot of, you know, the big semiconductor companies out there. You can see that most of them have been doing really well over the past 52 weeks. But uh, AMD has kind of, although they're also been doing quite good, we are a bit down compared to the you know highs uh, which we had in the March uh, so three four months ago. But I think if you look at the details here, there's uh, like this is essentially the run up that we have seen over the past let's say couple of weeks. You know we were not uh, not long time ago we were at you know I think like, yeah you can see that by end of June we were at 150 153 US dollar and we are now you know uh, yeah 30 US dollar above that level. And I think this was. Uh, quite obvious uh, case because uh, the market is aware of the Q2 earnings that's going to come in now in I think probably 28th of July so it's like in two or one and a half weeks we're going to have AMD's um, Q2 earnings and in that earning I think they will have a really really strong guidance for uh, Q3 so I think they will guide for like six and a half to seven billion with a much improved gross margin and much improved net income and we're gonna have a look into that we can also see that another good news for AMD is that they just purchased the Finnish startup Silo AI yeah, and this is a company that you know one of the most uh, interesting AI prospects in Europe uh, based in Finland so the, the Silo AI investment is gonna give AMD access to 300 to 350 developers which I think is gonna be really helpful for AMD as they are scaling up their MI300 business. Uh, so yeah, they, they that kind of purchase of 660 million, 665 million is gonna help to kind of scale up the, on the soft, software base, uh, the AMD uh, MI300 business, which is, in my opinion, the main competition to, to Nvidia's margins and uh, market share. So looking and also one important note before we look into the details, we can see that uh, for those who have maybe not followed AMD that uh, closely, that AMD bought uh, the best FPGA, so field programmable gate array companies, uh, Xilinx, a couple of years ago in 2022 for like 40, 46 million US, uh, billion US dollar, if I recall. And that purchase is going to be amortized uh, over like, you know, a period of 10, 15 years. And we can see that the rate that they have been doing this in for the past quarters has been like from 850 million a quarter to let's say now 600, 650 million a quarter. And as we go onwards, it's going to decrease step by step. But I think for the next quarter, it's going to be around 580, 580 million to so just low 600s to high 600s. And uh, that's important because we know that usually it's been one of the reasons why AMD's PE ratio has been so high according to, you know, uh, when you go to, for example, if you look here, the PE ratio of AMD is uh, 263. And that's based on the uh, gap PE ratio. But if you look at the non-gap PE ratio for AMD, I think things are getting really interesting. So AMD is making essentially, let's have a look at the here. We can see that AMD making, for example, uh, to, to do their non-gap operating income is 1.1 uh, billion for the past quarter. So in now, if we now look at the, let's say the gap uh, gross, uh, the gap margins. If we look at the gap income, is uh, operating income is at thirty six million US dollar, and if we look at the non gap income, it's like one point three. So non gap operating income, it's like one point three, uh, one point one billion US dollar. So it's a huge difference, and part of that is because of the Xilinx amortization, uh, which uh, you know takes six seven hundred million per quarter. So I think like once you consider that and once you consider that AMD is projected to have, you know, my projections is 5.9 billion US dollar revenue for this uh, upcoming earnings report. Uh, they themselves guided for 53% gross margin and operating expenses of 1.8 billion. So if we just quickly look at it, you know, 5.9 billion times 53%, that should give you 3 billion, um, 137 million US dollars in non-gap gross, uh, gross profit 
operating expenses of let's take it as uh, 1800 as they said and that should leave us with an operating income of 1,337 million US dollar and this is interesting because that's roughly 200 million more than they had in the previous quarter which would mean that uh, yeah that's a healthy 10-15% increase quarter of quarter uh, increase in non-gap operating income and I think you know in my honest uh, view the biggest jump in revenue will not come by this quarter the biggest jump will become by Q3 and most importantly Q4 and that's because the data center segment you know AMD's business is divided in four business segments the embedded so the FPGA that's the Xilinx purchase that I mentioned which they amortize uh, a certain amount every quarter then they have the gaming GPU and console CP, uh, console part where they you know they do the PlayStation 5 Xbox and you know the your dedicated uh, gaming GPUs that people buy for the gaming uh, uh, gaming computers and those two segments has kind of been quite slow over the past uh, let's say quarters it's a let's say seasonality and uh, just you know we are just in a downturn for the moment but that's you know going up and down over the years over the past 20 years so it's just uh, nothing unusual it's just how it always have been we have some few good quarters and some bad quarters but the interesting part is you know the client cpu and apu amd launches their new ai9 hx37 strix apu which is a cpu and gpu combined for laptops and this will cover most of the laptop market you know if you want to have the absolute best gaming performance you still need a, a dedicated gpu for your laptop for the for the vast majority i mean for the hundreds of hundreds of millions of laptops that being sold to the most people for companies for work and just general people that are using them other than gaming that's like the 90 percent of the laptop market if not more those do not need a, a dedicated gaming gpu they'll do just good enough with a apu which is essentially this kind of product that amd has and this is the new generation strix point and it's gonna have you know a as good as a performance at the best ones uh, last year but in a smaller form factor and more efficient and the gpu side is also going to be you know a lot better than the one that was launched last year some early uh, benchmarks indicate uh, yeah 50 46 percent uh, increase compared to the previous generation so i think you know this is um yeah this this points uh, to the picture that AMD's client CPU and APU segment will do just really really well even this quarter but essentially like going forwards as well by second half of this year and we also know from Moore's Law is Dead a really really uh, great YouTube channel which has uh, good uh, information from the channels out there you know the the big uh, um, resellers of uh, this, uh, this kind of products and he's kind of speaking about like historic launch for AMD according to him this is the best launch that amd has ever had on a you know new laptop chip so that's why i think that amd will do a really good uh, um, segment there in client cpus and apu with a nice increase in margin but then the last one you know the big one this is why amd is kind of getting increased price targets from analysts and that's the the data center segment and they were like as I mentioned previously, six months to 12 or maybe even 18 months behind NVIDIA. So NVIDIA was first and that's why we've seen their meteoritic uh, rise on the you know stock price. You can see that NVIDIA stock price is just, yeah, yeah it's going up something crazy like 500% in a year or something. So they're essentially top three biggest companies on the, on the planet with a market cap of 3.2 billion US dollar. So that's more than 10, 11 times uh, AMD's market cap. And essentially 30 times Intel's market cap but I think that AMD is gonna take a nice uh, piece of that cake I think they the their strategy from AMD is to sell their chips at a lower selling price still very high 15,000 US dollar maybe somewhere there whereas Nvidia should sell them at 25 and 30 but this means that for each uh, you know revenue uh, market share that AMD will get from Nvidia the actual unit market share is more so if you you know if amd sells at half the price and if they if they have 10 percent of the revenue market share for the ai gpus they that would mean that on the like actual unit sold amd should have roughly you know 2x that so 20 percent uh, 
units uh, market share but anyway so my projections uh, if you follow if you want uh, to have a further look into these numbers please look at my previous videos how i arrive at these numbers but my projections was that you know after lisa su said that they will have 1 billion of sold mi 300s so this is the first uh, kind of M M amd ai gpu and uh, yeah 1 billion on combined sales based on q4 last year and q1 this year and I would say that 65% of that sales should arrive in Q1 this year. So that's the 650 million. Then they should increase, you know, we, we've seen from the channels out there that and industry insiders that AMD is like grabbing as much as uh, capacity and production capacity that's at TSMC and the other suppliers as they can. So I increased the Q2 numbers to 800 million. So that is why I kind of have, you know, 2.75 billion for the data center compared to the reported 2 billion 337 in the previous quarter. And that's going to come with a nice, nice healthy margin. But then, as I said, you know, the run up in the stock, I think, is because of also the, the outlook that AME will give for Q3. So we can see that the stock again in the last uh, two or three weeks has gone up uh, essentially like uh, 15 20 percent even 30 percent so so that kind of increase i think is because every single quarter amd after the report give their outlook for the next quarter and i think this one is gonna be uh, you know in a couple of weeks it's gonna be at maybe 1 billion higher so like 6.7 6.5 billion us dollar plus minus three four hundred million with higher increase of gross margin and i think that's gonna you know affect amd in a positive way and for the q4 even more so so that so that's why i think you know if uh, if amd just give a update on their estimated uh, mi300 sales and if they increase that number if you know from the number that they now have at four billion four and a half billion to let's say closer to five five and a half I think the market will react positively, especially knowing that they are in the midst of the huge ramp up. And for the 2025, they could easily double that because reading from the industry insiders and the channel sites out there, we know that AMD's capacity at TSMC is going to increase quite a bit as Nvidia does. So as long as the AI market doesn't pop, uh, the bull market doesn't pop already, AMD should be a really good place. And I think, you know, the the main thing is that uh, my calculations, like, you know, I mentioned that, you know, the 5.9 billion for this uh, quarter and then the 53% gross margin, you remove the operating expensive, you have operating income 1.3, then you remove the taxes, the, the net income should be 1 billion, 150 million US dollar or thereabouts, and that should give you an EPS of 0 0.7. But I think, you know, this number will jump up to 0 0.9 maybe by q3 and above one us dollar per share in q4 and if that's the case just think about it this way so if the q4 lands at let's say 1.1 1 .1, um, earnings per share so that's a run rate at 4.4 us dollar earnings per share for uh, a stock that is at 100 and let's say 80 us dollar so if you just take a small easy calculation so you take 183 US dollar divided by 4.4, you should give, yeah. So that would be a PE ratio of 41, 42 US dollar. But again, again, I do believe that AMD will have a much better numbers for the full year of 2025. So you could argue, you know, we're already in the second half of 2024. So if you're investing for at least 18 months from now, that PE ratio of 42 could even be like, you know, if they increase their earnings per share even by 50% next year, this PE ratio will, you know, cut in essentially like uh, go down to like 28 or something. So I don't think AMD is necessarily that expensive. And there's a there's possibility for AMD if they continue, if my projections like, you know, if they are coming at around 10 to 12 billion of just MI 300 and 350X sales next year, they're gonna have you know just from this segment they're gonna easily have like three to four us dollar of uh, profit just from this segment let alone all the other three segments and as i said i i expect the fpga business to really recover by second year second half of next year so i think like we are in for six to seven us dollar uh, net income 
is uh, sorry earnings per share by next year so yeah that's uh, that's why i think like you know this is a nice opportunity for amd again this is not an investment advice but i just share my thoughts and i believe that in most scenarios amd will be a good investment from 12 months from now and the only scenario i think that this company is maybe not going to perform as well on the stock price basis is the entire market kind of goes down in a macroeconomic move because that uh, yeah we, we, to be honest we see that the semiconductor space uh, in general has been kind of going up so much so there's an argument for like you know kind of a bit of uh, profit taking and you know if people start to take profit on all the semiconductors in general that's maybe going to affect amd as well unless the numbers are just really insanely good so that's the only risk i see for the moment but yeah so other than that that's my thoughts so thank you for watching and yeah please uh, take care and see you in the next one